Hi, my name is Oriana Lo Cicero and I'm 22. I just graduated Bates College with a degree in chemistry and a minor in dance. I was a Latin American correspondent for Latino Republic. Um, my role there was to interview individuals from Colombia and Venezuela and then I would transcribe and translate the interviews and compose articles that would then be published on their website. My articles were very narrative driven so I would often select quotes from the interview first and then build my article around those quotes in the story um, that the interviewee told me. And I would also try to find and highlight voices that often don't get heard on larger news stations, because uh, this is one of the goals of Latino Republic and we really want to try and, and give a platform for voices that don't get heard in the United States especially from, the, from South America. And I would research NGOs to, fi to find these voices. I would research NGOs and look at their founders, reach out to their founders, see if they want to do an interview, or maybe I was looking at news in the area, uh, in that country or in a certain region, and saw a social injustice that I was interested in exploring and then I would go on Facebook or different social media platforms to try and find individuals to interview about who are in that environment, you know, to get a first-hand account and story. So that was often how I would try and find interviews that I found um, for one of my articles on Facebook, I just sent him, actually no, it was Instagram, I sent him a message on Instagram and he was super happy to in, like for me to interview him, he was a Venezuelan refugee, and so I got his personal story, which was really, really cool um, to find a voice like that that was just kind of a hidden gem. And the reason why we really try to make narratives and testimonials the, the focus of our articles and how why I would do it myself is it brings empathy to the social injustices, you know, it's not, we're not just talking about statistics now, people aren't numbers, you know, we have a real story of someone who's experiencing this and it really creates empathy from the reader um, and causes people to have conversations about like, oh my god, I read this thing in this story, it was so compelling and this issue is happening and so really that is our goal and to empower the people who are writing about, you know, really a lot of the news that we read informs our biases of even a whole country or a community in the way we view it. And a lot of the news around South America can often be this, these countries that are helpless and often lumped together. It's all South America. So like we really try and focus like my countries where Colombia and Venezuela and someone else might have Peru, Ecuador, and Brazil. You know, we really try to hone in on specific countries and then specific communities to really show that there's all this variety in South America and that these are people and they are facing these injustices and it's not just a statistic. And there's also a lot of amazing, beautiful, good things happening there. It's not just all bad. And so in my stories, I would really try to highlight the really amazing work that nonprofit organizations were doing and what individuals had overcome and and the way that they feel about the situation they're in you know and really making it their story and us really just providing that platform for the voices to be shared out to the masses um, so that was a big focus for me when i was writing my articles and this is this is hard work you know you're it's emotionally taxing and it is time-consuming because you have to find interviewees, you have to interview them, transcribe, translate, and then condense all these ideas. So you really learn a lot from this process on how to consolidate your ideas. What are really the important questions to ask here? How do I portray this person's life and their image to the truest form of, of who they are and how they would want to be portrayed to the world. So it's really about communicating with them and trying to consolidate that all down. So it is, there's a learning curve for sure and it's a continual learning process. Um, 
And like I said, it's really emotionally intensive because these subjects can be really hard to really, you immerse yourself in it. You're reading articles on articles and statistics and stories about social injustices that are happening. And yes, in our articles, we're trying to, I was trying to frame it in a positive light, but you're reading a lot of <laughs> negative articles too. And just seeing all the people on the ground in talking to people in these nonprofits in South America and seeing the work that they do is really, really inspiring. And I really want to use my Spanish in a valuable way like this moving forward. Like it really showed me the value of being able to speak another language and how much I enjoyed doing the interviews and I did enjoy the writing and consolidating and doing all that and I learned so much from it but I think what I enjoy more is talking to people, interviewing, doing those kinds of things. So now I know moving forward that uh, I want to start looking for jobs that maybe require a community liaison with migrant communities um, or working in a school that is community liaison where there are a lot of migrant workers or working um, with individuals who have been detained by ICE um, and working with them and their families, doing work like that where Spanish becomes really valuable, and knowing both Spanish and English becomes really valuable. Um, I'd love to, this really showed me that I'm capable of doing work like that because, I mean, I studied chemistry, so I never really, um, if you asked me a few years ago, I would never have imagined my life would have taken this direction. and the this latin american correspondent internship really gave me that really showed me that i was capable of that and i actually just received a job at a nonprofit that provides behavioral health services for migrants as a receptionist because receptionists need to be bilingual so i'm really excited to start that work and continue on this journey and latino republic has really helped push me down helps guide me really to this path um, that I didn't know I was, was even possible. So I'm definitely very grateful for all the guidance from Soledad. This is a really amazing opportunity when you're coming, um, right out of college or when you're in college to have the guidance that Soledad provides she reads through everything. If you have any questions, she was available. If I wanted to run interview questions by her, if I got stuck on anything, she was there and so helpful. She's done this work before and she was even writing articles on top of helping us and doing other um, administrative work for the nonprofit. She was also writing her own articles and interviewing people. Like She is so experienced, so helpful and very kind. I will really carry a lot of the experiences that I had during my time at Latino Republic with me moving forward and still keep in contact with the people that I interviewed and I learned so much from them and their stories are so inspiring and just engaging to read from the other, um, to hear about from my, from the own people I interviewed, but also to read other stories from the other Latin American correspondent. So it was just a really cool little community to be a part of. Um, and I'm really excited to see how these experiences continue to affect me and move with me and inform my decisions as I move forward in life. Thank you to the Latino Republic community.